The March 6, 2019 meeting of the <coughs> Planning Commission will now come to order. Will the secretary please call the roll? Chairman Gail Schick. Present. Doug Dennison. Present. Kelly Hall. Present. Victor Tallon. Here. Jerry Bushelman. Here. Cindy Showerman. <coughs> Here. Town Board Liaison David Soslowski. Here. First item on tonight's agenda is a review of the agenda itself by the Planning Commission for any addition of items or changes to the agenda. Mr. Chair, I move we accept the agenda as written. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Tallon, second by Commissioner Bushelman that we accept the agenda as presented. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those that vote <laughs> opposed vote no. And the motion carries unanimously, I believe. <laughs> Once my machine will kick over here. Next item is the public invited to be heard. If there is anyone in the audience who has an item that they wish to present to the commission that is not on tonight's agenda, now is the time to do so. And if you have something to present to us, if you would uh, come to the podium, give us your name and address, and you will have a three minute time period to give us your information. So anybody have anything to present? We'll move to the next item. And the next item is uh, consent calendar. This evening's consent calendar consists of the approval of the minutes of the February 20th, 2019 meeting. Mr. Chair, I move we approve the minutes of the February 20th, 2019 meeting. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Talon, second by Commissioner Showerman, that we approve the minutes of the February 20th, 2019 meeting. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Motion carries unanimously. We will now close our regular meeting, open up a public hearing for a conditional use grant, Harmony First Annexation. David, do you have a- Yes, your, thank uh, you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, for the record on this public hearing, I need to disclose that I am a sitting member of the town board, that I'm here in my capacity as a non-voting liaison to the Planning Commission. Although I will be present during this hearing, I will not be giving my opinion or participating in the discussion. I will not let tonight's proceedings influence or affect my review of this matter when or if it comes before the town board. I will make my decision at the town board level based solely on the evidence presented during that town board public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, David. Carlin, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. The item before you is a request for a conditional use grant, which would allow agricultural uses with um, the property is known as the Harmony First Annex. Um, this conditional use grant was reviewed in accordance with section 16.7 of the Municipal Code regarding the criteria for conditional use grant. Um, one of the purposes for a conditional use grant is when there is a use that is not addressed in the code, and that is the situation here, the agricultural uses, which are not addressed in our current code. Uh, the site is located just east of Well County Road 13 and south of Harmony Road. Um, a portion of the property is located in general commercial as well as the residential mixed use zone district, which also allows commercial uses. Um, the applicant has submitted a site plan that is being reviewed concurrently with the conditional use grant as the two um, do need to go together in this case uh, so that the conditional use grant can be adequately reviewed with the criteria. Um, just going over some of the highlights of the site plan, some of the key items here. Uh, traffic will be addressed with a right turn in onto, this will be future right of way, it has not been dedicated at this time and therefore there's no street name. Um, it's located just west of a collector road in the, um, the Ridge Harmony Road subdivision. 
the the garden center will be located uh, here and um, there's a number of greenhouses throughout the site there's also a tree farm and um, other plant materials growing over here um, the site will be buffered along Harmony Road with uh, various plant material on site as well as uh, they will be providing street trees and other buffer material on Harmony Road and adjacent to their parking area. This is um, a site that would be reviewed in accordance with the commercial corridor standards which also do not uh, address greenhouse use or didn't anticipate that use. So um, the glass part of the greenhouse is not a material that's addressed in the corridor plan. The applicant has made um, as many efforts as possible to make it consistent with that plan, adding a wainscot, as you see here along the, the base of the elevations, as well as some uh, columns at the edges of the building and some overhangs, but generally will be consistent with the, the other agricultural uses and residential uses in the area. And this is um, another view of the greenhouses. And the landscaping that uh, they will be providing. Obviously, uh, quite a bit is some um, some of this not only will be used for buffering the parking area, but also to, to show off their material as well. And this is um, the western portion of Harmony Road. And so in staff's review, we've found that the application is consistent with the CUG criteria. Um, these nine items are summarized here for your consideration. This is a 121 acre site. It is generally consistent with the agricultural nature of the area and uh, some residential to the north. The physical appearance is appropriate and suitable. Um, appropriate location of the buildings, um, adequate provision of, of parking. This will meet the commercial parking standards. And then um, traffic, as I addressed earlier, a right turn lane in on um, an access road leading to the site. Storm drainage has been addressed with the site plan review and um, there will not be hazardous material on the site, and that the general compatibility of the proposed use is suitable. The site being a public hearing uh, did require notification and posting in the newspaper. Uh, the properties here in yellow were the ones notified. Uh, neighborhood meeting was not required for this type of CUG. Uh, we did not receive any comments from neighbors. Uh, staff is recommending approval of the conditional use grant as presented following the condition that the site plan and development agreement are approved um, by town staff prior to building permit. And staff requests that the application supplemental materials, staff memorandum supporting documents, testimony from public hearing, and recommendation are entered into the record. And that concludes my presentation. The applicant is here as well, and um, I don't believe they have a presentation, but let me check. No. Nope. Nope. You don't want to come up here and do a dog and pony show? <laughs> okay, since this is the public hearing portion of the process, is there anyone in the audience who has any comments or questions pertaining to this item?
seeing there be none, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Move to close the public hearing. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Bushelman, second by Commissioner Tallon. That will close the public hearing. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries unanimously. We will now reconvene our regular meeting and uh, move on to the next item, which is a recommendation to the town board for the conditional use grant that was just discussed. Uh, anything further, Carlin, that you have? I just was going to add that your recommendation will be uh, considered by the town board next Monday night. Okay. Comments, questions from the commission? Mr. Chair, just one quick question. Is this the same location where the tree farm is located right now along yeah. Harmony? Uh, yes, yeah, so the so. garden center would be just east of where those trees are. Okay. Sure. I have a question from Mark Curiosity. Um, you move the whole operation over to this <coughs> Can I stay here? Well, actually, you have to come up to the podium. And I know it's a long trick. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just so we can get the recording. Correct. Yeah, the intent. Yeah. Could we get your name and address? Oh, um, I'm Chris Serbusek with Harmony Gardens. Okay. Um, we've had the nursery for a long, long time. And yes, the trees uh, that are out there, we've been growing for probably three, four years. <coughs> And uh, directly in front of where those trees are is where the site is, is where the, the improvements that you saw. And yes, the existing location from Harmony and I-25 is going to relocate uh, to this location wow. um, because there's going to be additional development and there's been a lot of development pressure sort of pushing in on uh, our existing operations. So Welcome to yeah, it should be, a, should be a good thing for Windsor. And, great for us that we get to have all of our production and our sales the same location hopefully we'll be more efficient great, thank you that's good great. any other questions comments mr chair i move that we forward a recommendation of approval the conditional use grant uh following uh, staff's uh the conditions that staff set forth second <clears throat> and moved by commissioner talent second by commissioner bushelman that we Board, a recommendation of approval of the conditional use grant application to the town board as presented and subject to the condition that was noted. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. And motion carries unanimously. Now it's officially welcome to Windsor. Thank you. <laughs> Moving on to the next item, which is a determination of off-street parking requirements, Westgate Commercial Subdivision Lot 2. Carlin, you have the floor. <clears throat> Had to just reject the updates. Wanted me to update the computer right now. <laughs> Great timing. <laughs> I got a computer like that too. That <laughs> got a new one ordered though. So this item before you is a off-street parking determination for lot two of Westgate Commercial. Um, this is uh, for a proposed coffee shop. Um, in accordance with section 161030 of the municipal code, the planning commission has the authority to review a parking determination when um, requirements are not specifically outlined in the code, uh, such as this use before you. Uh, this site's located uh, south of Highway 392 Main Street, just east of I-25, and west of Westgate Drive. It's within an existing commercial center is zone general commercial. Um, this site has uh, four existing tenants consisting of medical and office um, and the proposed use is an addition <coughs> get this to work, right here. Um, this would be the the coffee shop and there would be a drive through lane here and they would be uh, taking advantage of some vacant uh, teller banking area right here. Um, there's three parking spaces that are proposed in addition to what's already existing. There is an approved plan uh, that 
um, for whatever reason had an incorrect number of parking spaces shown as um, allowed or permitted. And then um, to add to this, that, that number of spaces shown on the plan wasn't built. So um, what exists today is 36 spaces. Um, they are proposing 39 spaces. And from reviewing the different uses on this site and comparing um, <clears throat> those uses with what other communities allow, we found that um, most communities don't address a coffee kiosk or drive through at restaurants that do not have indoor seating. Um, there are a number of provisions for shared parking and if you're near transit-oriented development for reducing spaces, but nothing too similar to this. So looking at what other communities um, allowed or uh, required for office parking and um, looking at what would be compatible for a coffee shop with no indoor seating. Um, you put all those pieces together and basically this request for 39 spaces, a reduction in nine spaces, uh, staff finds uh, reasonable. And we base that on a number of items. Um, first, that the 1600 square foot shop with the four employees, um, that will address the spaces for the employees per code and then um, the number of spaces that will be, um, I guess, utilized here for customers in the drive-through is not something that's calculated in the code. Um, some other communities uh, did count those spaces. Um, then we have some examples from around town and this one in the middle is actually from Loveland where you can see that these sites are and these are on really cold days other than the middle one. Um, busy days, but the parking lots aren't being utilized. Um, the top photo is Dutch Brothers. That was last week on one of our coldest days. Um, these three cars here for employees, in addition to a motorcycle here, everyone else is in the drive through um, Same with the human being here two employees, two cars. So um, looking at this, we found that the eight additional spaces for on-site parking really is not necessary and that the request is reasonable. Um, looking at what some of the other communities do, um, there is quite a range depending on location. Um, for Collins, it would be two to eight spaces. Um, and then there are reductions for if it's within a shopping center, um, if it's pedestrian oriented, and then there's alternative compliance, which is basically the process that we have before you is, is our version of alternative compliance. And then Greeley did have a standard for, that was less restrictive for pickup take out windows, but um, Oddly enough, they, they really kind of penalized someone that provided outdoor seating, which is something we'd rather encourage, not um, discourage. So um, in any sense, uh, there really wasn't a very good comparison out there. We looked at um, what office requirements would be in Fort Collins, and they would be far less. Um, our code would require 48 spaces, and Fort Collins had a range of 24 to 30. And with the applicant proposing 39, it's well above what Fort Collins would even uh, permit, as you're all aware they have maximum <coughs> requirements as well. The applicant also provided um, a pretty thorough analysis of the different times of days and um, during the week, illustrating here in six different photos that parking isn't an issue currently. That um, in all of these photos here, you can see that there's parking available. And so based on all of this, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission 
determine that the parking is adequate as proposed and approve as presented. And um, the applicant did, did say that they have a presentation they wanted to provide you. Good evening, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. My name is Katie Thompson with Ripley Design. I'm here on behalf of Ryan Beam, the owner and uh, applicant of the project with uh, Chief Cornerstone Properties. And our project's located at 4650 uh, Royal Vista Circle. Um, also on our team, uh, traffic engineer is Matt Delich with Delich Associates. Um, I would also like to acknowledge uh, Justin Larson with Bought by Larson Architects. Um, he is no longer with us, but has been a key player in this project up to this point. Um, a few of these slides are uh, a little overlap with Carlin's presentation, so I'll try to go as quickly as possible. Um, here we show the proposed site in the an aerial image. Um, we're located in lot two of Westgate Commercial Subdivision. Um, and as you can see, we're we're located right on the corner of a pretty major um, intersection into the town of Windsor, and it's one of the first things that people will see as they come into Windsor. Uh, this shows just a street view of the existing building. The main building is on the right there, um, which used to serve as a bank with a drive-through just to the left. Um, that bank is no longer an existing tenant in the buildings, uh, so the drive-through as well is um, not being utilized. So here we show the existing approved site plan, I believe from 2001. Um, so this existing building here is now um, comprised of four major tenants, two of which are gen general office uses, two of which are the medical uses. Um, as Carlin has stated, we are um, under parked for the existing uses by two parking spaces. Um, however, even considering that two of those tenants are considered to be slightly higher intensity uses than what um, just a general office would be, um, we believe that the parking is <coughs> adequate and the existing lot is actually consistently um, has open spaces, which we'll show you further on here. Um, so here we have the conceptual site plan, um, and as you can see, we have a proposed 1,600 square foot um, coffee shop building that is located <coughs> where the, exist the old <coughs> bank drive through used to be. Um, based on the town of Windsor's parking standards for eating and drinking establishments, required parking would be eight spaces for customers, two spaces for employees for a total of 10. Um, due to the site constraints that we have on this this site, we are um, only able to provide three spaces. Um, we believe this is justified through the following reasons. And the first is um, based on uh, the code section 16-10 and relating to um, categories listed as required for parking in Windsor's code. Um, the code does not differentiate between different types of eating and drinking establishments, which we think is really important to this situation. The code is based on uh, the total square footage of the building. Um, for example, uh, this comes into play when comparing a large sit-down restaurant, which um, typically has a significant proportion of that square footage that is dedicated to customer seating area. Um, versus a small coffee shop, which a larger portion is back of house prep area versus a very small area um, that would potentially allow for some indoor seating. Um, that actual quantity is um, still being determined um, as we move through the site um, development process with the planning department. Um, another big difference we believe is that the um, 
the eating and drinking establishment does not differentiate the drive through and up to 10 parking spaces in our uh, particular situation would be um, utilized through the drive through vehicles um, that are able to use the drive through So as you can see, um, we're located along an interstate highway and an arterial um, highway, 392. So we don't anticipate the users who would be visiting this coffee shop to come and stay and have this be a destination um, place to sit and have coffee. We imagine this being primarily for commuters that are traveling into the town of Windsor and that would use the drive through um, first. Um, and then any people that we would uh, foresee coming and sitting down are people that are already working there, already using um, the parking spaces within the Westgate commercial subdivision. So as you can see here, these are the different uses that um, are all within walking distance to the coffee shop and um, would not need any additional parking. So these are the photos that we had taken throughout different times of day and um, different days of the week to show the current condition of the existing parking lot. Um, basically what we found were an average of about 12 to up to 25 available parking spaces during uh, peak hours throughout the day as determined by our traffic engineer. Um, overall an average of about 17 spaces available um, at any given point throughout the day. This also goes back to the code comparison with uh, Fort Collins, which we believe was appropriate for this site, um, not only because the site actually shares a property line with um, Fort Collins directly to the west of us is, is where that boundary begins. Um, and then um, we we also um, share in the corridor activity center, as um, I'm sure you're aware of, which just promotes a very shared nature between the two municipalities. Um, so what we found is for medical uses specifically, um, in Windsor that uh, requirement is based off the number of practitioners, which comes to a total of 20 required, versus Fort Collins is based off square footage, which would be a little over 15. Um, office uses are based on square footage in both municipalities and in Windsor that comes to about 17 or 18 if you round up and about five um, in Fort Collins. So what we, what we found by looking at these <coughs> was, was the existing uses um, in the site we found the difference of about 17 parking spaces. Um, what we are asking for is a reduction of seven for our proposed use. And then finally, we find that there's little overlap in the peak hours that um, we have in the existing building between the medical and office uses, and then also in the proposed use of the coffee shop. Um, peak hours for a coffee shop are typically from about 7.30 to 8.30. And what we've found that around that time, those are the times where the existing parking lot has the most space available. Um, you can see here, 25 spaces at about 8.30 tapering down as you get closer to the work day. So in summary, we, um, we don't believe that the proposal would be detrimental to public interest. And in fact, <coughs> we believe that it could be a really great addition to the community in a site that's otherwise underutilized. Um, that concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any comments, questions from the commission? Mr. Chair, that was kind of tongue in cheek, but now I know why I can never find a place to park in Fort Collins. <laughs> <laughs> now you know. <laughs> the mystery's over. Sure. I'm a little concerned that the applicant does, we're not Fort Collins. They look at one, to look at some, I think, it, and here I think the parking spots are good. Yeah. But I don't really like the logic of saying, well, this city has this, mm -hmm. and you should approve it based upon Fort Collins. So um, yeah. I, I don't like to set a precedent like that and I'm done. But, uh, but again, looking at everything, discounting that, I think we're good with the number of spaces that we're proposing. 
you know, I think the research that the applicant did for all of the different uh, points that you made here was uh, very good research that was done to prove the point and what was needed. And I have no problem with uh, approving this. With that, Mr. Chair, I'll, uh, I'll move that we uh, follow staff's recommendation in the determination of the parking for the proposed drive through coffee shop at Westgate. Second. It's been moved by Commissioner Talon, seconded by Commissioner Sharman, <coughs> that we approve the justification that was presented for the proposed drive through at Westgate Commercial. Commercial subdivision is adequate as proposed. Those in favor of the motion will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. The motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. And uh, welcome to Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> Communication from the Planning Commission. Cindy, you have anything? Nothing. Gary? Nothing to make. No communications. Miss Hall? Nothing. Doug? Nothing. Town Board Liaison. David? Nothing. Nada? Mr. Chair, sorry. No. Communication from the staff. Carla? Yes, a couple things. I just wanted to re remind everyone that next Wednesday is the CDOT meeting regarding um, the potential reroute of 257 and other important topics. So I'm sure there'll be a pretty good turnout and hopefully you can come and voice any comments, concerns that you may have. Um, it's a pretty major meeting. so if. If you're able to attend, that's great. Um, I'll be there. I'm sure Scott will be there too. Dennis and Engineering and others. Um, the other announcement is that we uh, offered the planning position that was open from uh, Devin uh, moving on. Um, so we've offered the position to uh, Sandra Mazzetti and she'll be starting on Monday. And she formerly used to work at um, the firm that was just here <laughs> um, years ago and then took some time off and went back to school to get her master's degree. So, yeah. And she's right next door in Greeley, so it be a great addition. Cool. Amanda? Tonight I do. Wow. I knew you did. Um, oh. Tonight is my last planning commission <gasps> meeting. Mm -hmm. I am going to be moving home to Montrose. Um, so tomorrow is my last day with the town of Windsor. So thank you guys. Wow. Thank Pardon you for your service. Good. Great job. Yeah. I hate to see you go. Yes. Uh, do I draw another one off? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Sorry to see you go. Dang it. Wow. How you doing? Move to adjourn. You are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>